Welcome back to VMworld TV. I'm Douglas Phillips. And I'm Susan Gudenkopf. One of the most popular topics in uh, San Francisco. All the cool iPad apps. Let's go see if uh, there are any updates here in Copenhagen. I'm back with Srinivas. Srinivas, let's talk about the iPad app that you have for the vSphere management. What's changed in San Francisco when we last talked? Yeah, first of all, I want to give you a quick update on uh, how things have uh, gone since we last met. So uh, a lot of people have seen the video, obviously, and we've gotten a lot of positive feedback. So we've changed a few things. And before I show you what, what's changed, I want to give you a quick update on timing. Uh, so we're cranking on getting a beta out uh, in the next couple of weeks. Oh, great. And then we want to release it as a fling before the end of the year. So things are going according to plan. So Good. we're pretty excited to be able to get this out as quickly as we can. Well, let's see what you can do. All right, let me log into uh, the application. And once I log in, it, the login screen hasn't changed. This is all the same. Uh, a couple of things that we have changed since the last time. We'll show you the number of VMs that are being managed on, oh, a, on yeah. a per host basis. Yep. And you can actually click on it to get to the server. And on the server, just like we talked about last time, we show you each of the VMs as a playing card, and you can switch. Um, I like around. the I like the picture, so it's very easy to see which operating system they're running. At the same time, a couple things that we've added, we've added a little settings icon up here, and that lets me manage a couple things about the host. Okay. So I can actually put the host in maintenance mode, or I can even reboot the server. Wow. Right, I can do that. We've also added a history uh, button that shows you the list of all the servers and the virtual machines that are visited on in this particular. Um, login session uh, and then when I click on any of the VMs it takes me to the VM screen where I can get additional details about uh, the virtual machine and a couple things that we have added around here uh, we have added a, a, the ability to show you the snapshots okay. um, for that particular virtual machine and uh, the settings button up here is now context sensitive. Oh, and right? it changes. So it changes based on whether you're looking at a server or a VM. Yep. And when you're looking at a VM, it allows you to do suspend, stop, restart, those are the kinds of things that you can do from the settings. We also have the history button up here. And then from a metric standpoint, we show you the amount of memory being consumed mm -hmm. and the amount of CPU being consumed uh, by this particular virtual machine. I kind of like how it's also in a different color so it stands out a little bit more. Yep, exactly, exactly. So those are some of the changes that we've done. You know, we have a few things to add and a few things to clean sure, up, sure. Uh, but it's coming along pretty well. Hi, Scott. Can you give us a quick demo of the uh, View iPad app? Certainly. Uh, what I have on here is I have my iPad already connected to uh, our VPN for our corporate network. And if you notice, I have an icon here for the uh, View client with uh, native PC over IP. I'm going to connect to my regular production work uh, VM. It happens to run in our dog food environment where we're always running the latest and greatest uh, base levels of view. This is going to pull up, uh, I've now connected to the connection server, and I'm going to connect to my, uh, this is a Win7 64-bit uh, uh, VM running in Palo Alto. I actually normally use this over the WAN, just like we're doing here. Uh, my main office is in, uh, in the Boston area in Cambridge. So, uh, so I'm normally using PC over IP with a thin client, my desktop. This is connecting to the exact same VM using our native IP, uh, using our native PC over IP client. Uh, I've connected now. You can see I have a desktop here. Let me show you a little bit about the controls. One of the things we paid careful attention to with our uh, with our iPad client is to really embrace both the iPad controls and add virtual controls that make sense for Windows. So you get the full iPad experience. As you can see here, I'm manipulating the window using the touch screen, growing and shrinking. We also have this little target control, okay, that lets you uh, that lets you can adjust for the width of your finger and lets you do a simple. Uh, Point and click with just your uh, point and click operation with just your finger. At the same time, I can also use virtual control. Some of the Windows uh, mechanisms may not be precise enough with the touch controls. So here you see I have a virtual touchpad that we've added that we're pretty proud of. So this is just like having a mouse pointer or a touchpad on a laptop, and you can use that to uh, enter uh, input. So now I've just clicked here, and I'm going to bring up our. Uh, our uh, keyboard and you can see this is the standard iPad keyboard but we've actually added Windows function keys to it. So on the one hand I can use the iPad just like I normally would but for convenience uh, we have various Windows special purpose keys to make it more like a PC keyboard where you need it. Again uh, giving you the giving you as good a Windows experience as you can have while using all the native experience of the iPad. 
Hi, Lisa. I understand vCloud Request Manager has a web front end that was really developed with uh, mobile platforms like the iPad in mind. Yes. Um, so this is the vCloud Request Manager uh, end user interface, and it's designed to make it very, very simple to um, provision a v apps and vClouds, and get the approval processes going through and, and with the workflow on the back end, and um, automatically manages the software licenses associated with that blueprint. Cool. Well, show it to me. All right. You just go ahead and log in here. So what it does then is it just goes in, logs you in, it shows you your applications. So you can very quickly add an application here. You put a little title in, which is, um, I'll just say it's Reading. It has a date that it automatically goes to, um, and the virtual data center you can pick. And it shows processing. What exactly is happening right now? So what it's doing is it's going down into vCloud Director and pulling in, in some information, gathering the information they need to do the approval processes and the provisioning processes. Then what you can do is you can pick your virtual data center over here. I think. There we go. So you can pick the blueprint that's been developed in vCloud Director and um, go quickly. Get that one. And so what it does is then you just, you've just provisioned a cloud just as simple as that. You finish up, it starts the approval process on the back end, and um, you know, hopefully you're up and running in about five minutes if, you're, if your manager approves it. And is there any kind of tracking? I mean, can you review it from here, what stage it's in? So what you do then, it shows you all your requests, all the things that you've put in there, and the status that they're in. As you can see, we've got a bunch of them waiting for approval and a whole bunch of them that are completed.